All right, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Richard Taylor, and I'm going to get right into this video. Uh, about last week or so, I made a video concerning uh, sex trafficking and drug charges uh, that were assigned to Wayne County Sheriff Deputy Christopher Worth. Now, everyone knows about the FBI investigation of Christopher Worth, Mike Cox, uh, Charles Schaefer, and the entire Wayne County Sheriff's Department. Now, in that video, I took information uh, that was obtained from Pacer.com. Now, Pacer.com is a government website where uh, documents from federal cases are uploaded for public view. You can go to this website, patient.com, pay the fee, and you can get court documents, motions, indictments, and the like, court dates, everything from this site. So last week, I received this document right here. Uh, as you see, it says the United States District Court, Eastern District of North Carolina, Western Division, and you see um, United States of America versus Chris Worth, right? And right here on line one, uh, you see that defendant is charged in a multi-count indictment alleging, uh, what does it say? Defendant distributed a Schedule II controlled substance and counts of sex trafficking, including a minor. You see it right there. Now, when I released this video, um, I received messages uh, from people that were telling me that the information is incorrect, uh, that the wrong paperwork or the indictment was uploaded, and those charges were pretty much false information. And, you know, of course, I countered. How can the information be false when it is clearly listed in the indictment on this federal document that these charges uh, were assigned to Chris Worth and his lawyer was asking the judge, uh, Judge uh, Myers, for extra time to provide pretrial motions. Now, I went back and forth with a couple of people on Messenger and they assured me that uh, there was another document that was going to be released within the next couple of days. Uh, the paralegal somehow made a mistake. She either copied and pasted the wrong charges or she uploaded the wrong documents or the, the case was not supposed to be assigned to Chris Worth. Nevertheless, it all sounded uh, inconceivable to me. Uh, that this document that was signed off by the judge, the prosecutor, and the defense attorney, and Chris Worth himself, could somehow obtain fraudulent or false information, right? So, however, um, about two days later, uh, I received this document right here. And if you read, it's the same case, the same document, doc docket number 523CR262M, you see it right there. And it says United States versus Chris Worth. And if you read the first line here, it is much different uh, from the previous line. It says defendant is charged in a multi-count uh, indictment alleging defendant conspired with others to defraud Wayne County government. So these, this correction, and if you see right here, uh, it says corrected. Now it goes on all the information, uh, from these, th this document is identical to this document, except that paragraph one, right? And as I told someone, I've been in court all of my life. You know, I've been, not all of my life, but, you know, for a majority of my life, I had various charges. And at no point 
in, in my court litigation experience, have the charges that I've been charged with been listed as different charges on an indictment or a court paper. So it still seems inconceivable to me how these charges, once again, could be listed in this federal motion, which was signed by the judge, the prosecutor and defense attorney can be some way fraudulent. Now, I'm going to go over a couple of these messages that I received uh, that, once again, has caused me to make this video. Not only these messages, but, of course, this corrected document uh, that was also uploaded or received from the Pacer website. Now, this is just one message. I'll uh, not read the name because I promised the people I will not uh, disclose their names. But one said, hi, Richard, just letting you know that you have posted incorrect information on the WhatsApp, What's Up Goldsboro page about Chris Worth. And my response was, well, I read the information from documented court documents. Do you have any documents to the contrary? And this person responded, the documents are the wrong case. Chris was never involved in that case. The lawyer made a mistake. One question, okay, in what case? Is there another case like this person is saying Chris was never involved in that case? Does that mean is someone else in the Wayne County Sheriff's Department involved in that case? This person seemed to have inside information as well as the other person that messaged me as well. So as I just asked you guys, I asked them, well, whose case is it then? I'm confused. And like I said before, I have never heard of something like this happening. And the judge ruled on the order granting the motion. So did the judge not notice the mistake? This doesn't make sense, at least to me. Please help me understand. And like I said, this, this, this paper right here is a request for Chris Worth's lawyer to receive extra time to receive the motion. Uh, to, to review the motion and discovery. Now, this last part of that indictment is the judge's order. And in this document, the judge granted the defendant's motion to delay the trial in order to review the, ev the evidence. So like I asked this, this lady, how in the world does this document go all the way through being signed, being, you know, endorsed, being agreed upon in a different motion, in a different order by the judge if the information was incorrect? Like I, like I asked the lady, did the judge not read the indictment himself? Uh, but nevertheless, um, in, 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 in her response, to, you know, my question to help me understand. She said the court documents posted were the wrong documents for the Worth case. So once again, whose case is this lady or, or the paralegal or whoever is uploading the information, whose case is this person getting uh, Chris Worth mixed up with? I'm still wondering that. And then I said, okay, how so? The judge, the prosecutor, and his lawyer signed off on them. Make this make sense. And then this person says, well, the paralegal put the wrong name on the case file when she uploaded them. Now, once again, the case file is the same, so that can't be true. This is the case file on this one, and this is the case file on that one. So if she put the wrong case file... Like she said, she put the wrong name on the case file, then that would be a different case file. If if I'm making sense. She said the paralegal put the wrong name on the case file when she uploaded them. The case is correct, but it's not worth case. Now, basically, she's saying these, these numbers should be different. But as we see here from the one alleging child sex trafficking, and this one right here in the corrected, both of those case numbers are the same. 
Rewind the video if you need it, if you need to. But both of those cases are the same. So once again, this raises suspicion for me. And then I asked the lady point blank, tell me, how do you know this info? Do you know the paralegal, the judge, the prosecutor, question mark? And it still doesn't answer the question of why the documentation was signed by all parties. No one read it, I, I asked. I, I said, I mean, I'm really trying to understand it. She says, yes, I know the lawyer and the paralegal. It was just a mistake that was made. That's all. And then I asked once again, that doesn't answer the question of how the mistaken document was signed by all three parties. And after that, it was crickets, right? And so, you know, that was on November the 2nd. Now that is, I think I received this quote unquote corrected document on November the 3rd. But as you see, this lady saying that the paralegal uploaded the wrong name on the case file. But we see right here that the same case file is alleging the sex trafficking charges, but also is corrected right here as defrauding the government. So... Um, once again, it still seems kind of shady to me. I don't know whose case that this, this lady was talking about. But I'm going to also take you through another message. Uh, and this lady, once again, and both conversations were very amicable. You know, and, and I appreciate that. If anyone, you know, has any discrepancies with any information I share, I welcome you know, conversation and dialogue, but, you know, I'm going to tell you, if you give me bad energy, if you give me, you know, um, disrespect, I, I'm not that guy yet. You know, God is still working on me, as they say. You know, I'm going to give it right back to you. But fortunately, uh, we had some very amicable conversations about uh, this discrepancy, quote, unquote. So this, this person says, hey, Richard, I appreciate your efforts in informing the community of all the recent events, however, I did just want to let you know that a YouTube video you did today on the charges involving Christopher Worth was not actually correct. There was an incor incorrect indictment document submitted to the courts and a new one was posted on the website this morning with the correct charges. Now, once again, this lady alleges that the indirect indictment was submitted to the court. Mind you, if the incorrect indictment was submitted to the court, how did it get all the way to being uh, fouled and being having an order ruled on it? Once again, shouldn't the court have caught that right then if an incorrect indictment was submitted? Nevertheless, um, I responded, okay, I'll correct that. Do you know where the correct documents are? She says, I can work on getting you the link. I am a business owner and I'd appreciate to remain anonymous to assure that I am not biased. I have followed this case very closely as well. Unfortunately, with the court system being so slow, we will just have to wait to see how it all plays out. I just didn't want incorrect information out there when I know for sure that it's incorrect. Once again, how do, how do these people know that these documents are incorrect? And once again, how did incorrect documents get submitted to the court and ruled on, which no one can answer that question. Uh, but this person says there was a major typo and oversight by someone. Thank you for understanding. And I said, thank you. I understand. I'll check into it as well. Someone suggested that it may have been a mistake, but I've never seen that happen before in my life. But I guess it may be possible. And no worries, your anonymity is safe with me. Sidebar, yeah, if anybody ever wants to share information, call me, 919-587-7782, as you see from this video. You know, if you don't want to be identified because of whatever reason, then your, once again, anonymity is safe with me. And once again, uh, this, 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 this person replies, it is my understanding that a paralegal copied and pasted the wrong order without proofreading. Now, once again, this one says that, 
you know, the person, uh, the first person I talked to, if you recall, said, well, the person uploaded the wrong name on the wrong case. So both of these are two different separate stories. But the person goes on and said, that is a fatal error. I hope the correct document is soon updated on the website. I just didn't want your YouTube page to get labeled as spreading false information. Maybe removing the post would help you not to get any negative comments until the new document is published. And I once again responded, I understand you and I thank you for your concern. I just don't see how that can happen. Someone filed those type of charges erroneously, question mark, and where were the charges they were attempting to file? And the person responded, me either. Anytime you're dealing with someone's rights, there's absolutely no room for error in my opinion. I'm also waiting to hear that information on the correct charges. And once again, I asked her, uh, but think about it. The judge approved the motion for continuation in that manner. Are you telling me that he didn't see the mistakes? It just doesn't make sense. Help me understand. All that I can tell you, she responds, is that an updated document is out there. Once again, how did she know that the updated document was already floating around? And um, I said, well, but you do understand what I'm saying. How can a judge make a ruling granting a motion in a fraudulent case? And then once again, there was no answer until the next day. When she says, hey there, a new document has been filed with the courts. I've tried to get the link, but I'm not having any success. Um, maybe the person who sent you the first incorrect document can help you get the updated revised document. And I said, okay, I'll check it out. So that's how that exchange went. Um, I think I received a call or a message two days ago. It was like, hey, when you're going to, you know, um, I'd appreciate it if you you know, make a uh, clarification uh, video immediately, uh, which, you know, I, 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 I still remain, you know, that, that sounded like an order uh, rather than a request, but I remained calm and said, okay, well, I'm, I'm traveling. I'll do it when I get back, which I am doing that now. But if you saw uh, the video about the suicide of uh, Matt Habermas, uh, which was a Goldsboro police officer uh, back in July, I did reference and did show uh, this corrected document at the beginning of that video, uh, which that person said, well, you know, I, I since you did make a whole video on, on those charges, you know, I saw, I saw you corrected in that video, but I'd appreciate if you make an entire video. And, um, and I understand that. And, and, and the person also suggested uh, that I take the video down. And which I responded, well, you know, if I take the video down, then there's no reason for me to uh, do a correction video. And right. So I guess the person understand that because I, I didn't hear anything from her. And I will leave that video up just for reference, because once again, I've never seen it once again happen that, you know, and this is in bold letters. Said it's corrected. And once again, I've never seen a court document that needed to be corrected with false charges on a motion that has already been granted by the judge. Once again, if that's what they're saying, if, you know, and, and the first person kept reference, okay, well, this is the wrong case. This was not worth case. That's somebody else's case. She uploaded uh, the, the, the wrong name to the wrong case. All of that legal mistaken identity case misplacement, whatever you want to call it, still doesn't make sense to me. I can't see it, but, I, but you know, once again, I, I went off this document. In the first case, that's why I will not take it down because that information was credible at the time. And it's just like I told people, if I go to Walmart today and buy a TV, uh, a, a 70 or, or 85 inch TV, for $300, right? And I go home and I tell people, hey, they're selling um, 85 inch TVs for $300. I just bought one. And then everybody goes to Walmart and Walmart say, oh no, that that is a mistake. Uh, it wasn't, it's not $300, it's $3,000. I'm not at fault because once again, that's what Walmart had as a price and that's what I paid 
for the TV. And once again, I'm not, I'm not at fault by sharing this document because that's what Pacer, which is a government sanctioned secured website had for that information. So I'm not fault at that. But then once again, I still, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's still almost, you know, unfathomable to me how such a mistake could be made with the severity of those charges, you know, which he was charged with. And, and just as one person said, child sex trafficking and bid rigging are two totally different categories. So once again, how did that happen? Somebody make it make sense to me. Was the paralegal on drugs? Was she hanging out with Charles Gurley or, you know, nah, let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. But um, you know, that's 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 still that's still, you know, unfathomable to me that, you know, something of that nature uh could happen. But um we're going to um hopefully um I, I, I have the next court date, so hopefully I'll be right in the court. So I'll be able to um give you first hand information on the, you know, the going zones of Worth and Cox. Um, I, I did receive some information over the weekend, so I'll probably be giving you updates on the Cox situation uh, very soon. But uh, this is Richard Taylor. Once again, I'm covering all things um, that are relevant uh, to, to, to this particular time in this particular city, but also in the world. I'm going to start covering, you know, a, a lot broader subjects. But I did want to... Um, address this issue. So evidently, the drug distribution and sex trafficking, child sex trafficking charges against Chris Worth have been corrected. You heard it from here first. So um, I hope this satisfies those who, you know, don't believe those charges to be true. Um, as for me, once again, I'm skeptical of the whole um, misplacement and mischaracterization of charges because I've heard some things about sex trafficking and I, in this town, in this city, with some, you know, law enforcement and uh, legal personnel, I'll say. But I, I have not delved deep into those details, so I'm going to wait uh, to release some of that information. But it is not far-fetched or, you know, it's not unfathomable that, you know, these guys, as, as we see uh, in previous videos, how Mike Cox was involved with prostitution, how uh, ex-deputy Trey Rose was involved with prostitution, and it has been alleged that Charles Schaefer, has been involved in prostitution. So prostitution, sex trafficking, I've been told by, they go hand in hand. So um, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see as more information uh, emerges uh, from all of these cases. But this is Taylor House Publishing. Once again, I thank y'all for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, whatever you have to do. But if you have any information that can clear up anything that I talk about, or if you want me to address any issues, uh, expose anything, you can call me direct, 919-587-7782. Y'all have a blessed night. Peace and blessings.